Hello everyone. So, in this lecture I am going to discuss about the anatomy and functions of accessories organ and here the accessory organ are salivary glands, pancreas and liver. This is the part of the digestive system. Uh, they are working as accessory organs in the digestive system. In the previous lecture we have already discussed about the anatomy of GIT and the anatomy of uh, stomach, small intestine and large intestine. So, let us start. Uh, the discussion on the anatomy and function of the first accessory organ which is the salivary glands. So, salivary glands they are releasing the secretions into the duct and the duct lead to the mouth. Here we have three parts, three types of glands in the uh, as a part of the salivary glands and these three parts are the parotid gland submandibular glands and sublingual glands. The positions we can see from this picture here, the first one is the parotid which is located at the site and the second gland uh, which is a part of a salivary glands, here is a submandibular gland number 2 which is nearly to this position and your third one is the sublingual which is here it is located nearly to the submandibular that is a sublingual glands. There are many more glands also which is present in the salivary glands, but the most important are the three parotid, submandibular and sublingual. Now, coming to the structure of salivary glands, what is the basic structure of these glands? So, see these glands are surrounded by a fibrous capsule and they consist of number of lobules. Yes. So, these lobules are made up of a small acnes which is lined by the secretory cells and these secretory cells are responsible for the secretions. Now, the secretions are poured into ductals that join up to form a large ducts and which will lead to the mouth that will pour the secretions into the mouth. And what are those secretions? Those secretions are the enzymatic secretions. They will help in the metabolism of the food. Yes. Now, blood supply. So, the external carotid arteries and external jugular veins they are supplying to the salivary glands. You will see this structure it is here, this is the basic structure of salivary glands. There are the lobules we can see, these are the lobules and these lobules we can see, if we will see the one lobule, it is covered as by the uh, that, that lobule, the one single lobule is made up of a small acne which is seen as a echinus, yes, which is lined with the secretory cells, they are the secretory cells and they are in, uh, they are increasing or they are forming the secretions, yes, which will pour in the duct. Now, we will see the composition of the saliva. So, the saliva means the secretion. So, this saliva is the combined secretion from the salivary glands, all of the salivary glands which I told you, yes. Now, these secretions, the saliva is nearly 1.5 liters. Yes. So, every day it is nearly 1.5 liters and what it consists of? So, it is consisting of water, it is consisting of mineral salts. There is a digestive enzyme present in the saliva which is responsible for the metabolism, which is responsible for convert, converting the complex form to the simpler form. Yes. So, there is a salivary amylase present which is known as a digestive enzyme. Mucus is also there, lysozyme, yes, these type of enzymes are also there. Then immunoglobulins, which is giving the defense mechanism. Then blood clotting factors are also present in the saliva. So, these are some of the components which is present in the secretion uh, formed by the salivary glands. Now, see how the secretion is regulated. So, the secretion is regulated by the nervous system and here the nervous system we are talking of is parasympathetic and sympathetic. So, parasympathetic stimulation is causing a profuse secretion of saliva. When there is the activation of parasympathetic system, it will increase the saliva, it will increase the secretion. 
with a relatively low content of enzymes and other organic substances and if we we'll see the stimulation of sympathetic system the opposite will be true in that case yes now the reflex secretion occurs and the reflex can easily become conditioned so that the sight the smell the thought of the food they can also stimulate the secretion of the saliva they can stimulate the parasympathetic system now coming to some of the functions of the saliva so the secretion uh, we are talking uh, from the salivary glands which is the saliva here it is giving some function the first function the most important function the chemical digestion of polysaccharides so polysaccharides here we are talking for the complex polysaccharides i uh, mean the starch we are talking yes these starches are uh, these starch is uh, converted into disaccharides monosaccharides with the help of the uh, salivary amylase present in the saliva so the first is the chemical digestion now the saliva contains the enzyme amylase that begins the breakdown of complex sugars yes and which is including here example we have taken is as a starch which is reduced into disaccharide maltose sucrose yes these type of disaccharides are formed here now the optimum ph for the action of salivary amylase enzyme is nearly 6.8 which is slightly acidic we can say now coming to some other functions of the saliva so most important one is the chemical digestion apart from it there is a lubrication of food so whatever the dry food we are taking that will enter in the mouth and it will moisten and without of the uh, lubrication or moistening uh, the uh, taste cannot be uh, uh, taste cannot be felt yes so this can be achieved only by the lubrication now cleaning and prevent damage to the mucous membrane so saliva is also helping uh, in the uh, in the cleaning and preventing the damage of the mucous membrane yes this is also one of the function then there is a non specific defense which is provided by the lysozyme enzyme and immunoglobulins present in the saliva the uh, there there are some uh, clotting factors present uh, in the uh, saliva which is presenting which is uh, which present in the saliva to combat from the microbe from the infection and here the taste function which i was talking uh, previously also uh, that taste can be only achieved when the dry foods we are taking and if they are moistened with the saliva then only we can sense the taste yes so this is very important uh, function of the uh, saliva the moistening or the lubrication um, uh, of uh, of the foods with the help of saliva to achieve the taste or to sense the taste so first uh, accessory organ uh, we have completed that is the salivary glands the three parts of the salivary glands uh, now uh, we'll discuss on the anatomy of pancreas so the pancreas is a pale gray gland which is nearly 60 grams and it is nearly 12 to 15 cm long here in this picture we can see there are also some part it is divided like head of pancreas there is a body of pancreas and this is a tail region tail of pancreas now see uh um, where it is located so it is situated in the epigastric region and left hypochondriac region in abdominal cavity why this organ is important uh, uh, we we are saying it as accessory organ of uh, digestive system so pancreas is forming the pancreatic juices yes from the exocrine section of the pancreas and this pancreatic juice is useful for the digestion of the food now see it consists of broad head body and narrow tail which i already told you in this diagram now the head lies in the curve of the duodenum you can see the head of the pancreas it is nearly attached to this section the duodenum section and this uh, uh, the significance uh, of this uh, location is in such in such way 
that the uh, secretion from the pancreas it is coming in the duodenum section uh, from the pancreatic duct yes so <coughs> the head lies in the curve of the duodenum and the body behind the stomach whereas tail is lies in the front of left kidney and it is just reaching to the spleen so this is the position how it is located now coming to the pancreas as a gland so pancreas is of uh, the uh, this gland is working as two uh, two type one is the exocrine and another part is a endocrine gland see the exocrine pancreas so exocrine uh, exocrine pancreas is uh, forming the pancreatic juices whereas endocrine gland is forming insulin glucagon yes here the important part is the exocrine pancreas because it is forming the pancreatic juices which is useful or uh, which is coming in the duodenum for uh, metabolizing the uh, food yes so here see this consists of large number of lobules we will see the section of the exocrine pancreas there are number of lobules okay and they are made up of small echinaceae if you will see one section that is a small echinaceae we are saying the walls of which is consisting of secretory cells and these secretory cells are forming the secretions sim uh, sim in a similar way which i told you for the salivary gland yes now uh, each lobule is drained by a tiny duct and these units these ducts these are tiny tiny ducts they are forming the uh, large duct means all of these tiny ducts they will uh, come out and forming a larger duct so see each lobule is drained by a tiny duct and these units eventually to form a pancreatic duct which extends to the whole length of the gland and open into the duodenum i already told you about this just before entering the duodenum the pancreatic duct join the common bile duct so see what happens there is a common pathway which i will uh, tell you in the later slide also see in this diagram uh, this is the uh, pancreas and uh, here you can see this is the one uh, there there are so many lo lobules and we have taken one lobule here and we have enlarged this particular lobules so here we can see uh this is the echinaceae see echinal cells secrete digestive enzyme yes so these are the echinaceae and in these echinaceae there are the secretory cells these are secretory cells these all are now they are uh, forming the pancreatic juices so all of the secretions are coming this way from this echinal also the secretory cells are forming uh, pancreatic juices similarly by this so all of the pancreatic juices is coming and uh, in this common duct which is called as a pancreatic duct the enlarged duct now these pancreatic juices they will come and there is a one uh, duct also that is called as a bile duct yes which is uh, coming from the gall bladder so bile juices are coming from the uh, gall bladder and uh, that uh, will come through the bile duct and all of the uh, uh, bile juices and all of the pancreatic uh, juices they will come they will attach in a common uh, duct and will open in the duodenum so all of the secretion will come in the duodenum to metabolize the food product so this is how uh, the secretions are coming uh, in the duodenum i hope this is clear to all of you here there is one section in the diagram which is the pancreatic islet or cell secretes hormones so this section you can see uh, this uh, different section here is the part of the endocrine pancreas yes here these cells are uh, uh, these cells are forming insulin glucagon yes they are maintaining the uh, glucose level in the body uh now uh, coming to uh, the other aspects here so the duodenum opening of the ampulla is controlled by hepatopancreatic sphincter so i told you there is a uh, uh, one secretion is the bile and another is the pancreatic juices so both are coming in a common uh, uh, common uh, gateway so that gateway is controlled by the hepatopancreatic sphincter which is 
uh, which is at the duodenum papilla. So, duodenum papilla is the opening. Here you can see uh, the bile juices coming from the gallbladder by this way and pancreatic juices are coming by this way. Both are coming and they are forming the common duct. Yes, and that is hepatopancreatic sphincter. There is a one gateway that is called as hepatopancreatic sphincter of OD, and the opening to the duodenum is called as a duodenum papilla. So there you can see all of the secretion will come this way. The same is what I told you. Now the function of the exocrine pancreas is to produce pancreatic juices, which is containing enzymes to digest carbohydrate to digest proteins to fats yes and later on we will discuss like what are the enzyme which is specific for the metabolism of carbohydrate or proteins or fats. Now what is important here is the parasympathetic stimulation is causing the increase in the secretion of pancreatic juices and opposite is true for the sympathetic stimulation. Now coming to the endocrine pancreas, so I already told you the endocrine pancreas consist of specialized cells and these specialized cells are called as a pancreatic isolates of Langerhans, yes and they are forming some hormones such as insulin, such as glucagon, they are controlling the levels of uh, uh, gl uh, blood glucose, yes. Now blood supply. So, blood supply to this region to pancreas is the endocrine section of the pancreas is by splenic or mesenteric arteries and veins, yes. So, this is important you need to know about uh, which is the blood supply for this pancreas region. Now see, so we have covered about the uh, pancreas, the second accessory organ for the digestive system. There we covered about the two parts, one is the endocrine gland. Uh, the pancreas which is working as endocrine pancreas or another is the exocrine pancreas. Exocrine pancreas is forming the pancreatic juices and endocrine pancreas is forming glucagon, the hormones, glucagon, insulin which is maintaining blood glucose level. Now, we will cover the third accessory organ which is forming some uh, digestive enzyme, yes, which is helping in the digestion. How liver is helping in the digestion? So, see, first we will uh, see the anatomy how it is. So, liver is the largest gland it is a very important term liver is largest gland in the body which is weighing nearly 1 to 2.3 kg yes. Now, it is situated in the see how, how we are saying it is the largest because the greater part of the right hypochondriac region it is taking uh, the greater part of the liver is in the this right hypochondriac region and part of it is in the epigastric region this is the middle region and we will see the very extreme left. So, the left hypochondriac region up to it is extended extended up to. So, it is covering a longer area we can see yes starts from the right hypochondriac to the left hypochondriac region. Now, see this is the liver here uh, we have taken the anterior view the front view or the posterior view which is the back view yes. So, there are the lobes uh, the right lobe and the left lobe and we will see from the back side. So, there is a quadrate lobe and the quadrat lobe yes. So, these four lobes are there. Now, we will see uh, the liver is enclosed in a thin inelastic capsule. Yes, and this thin in elastic capsule is complete incompletely covered by a layer of peritoneum. We will see the uh, uh, layering of the uh, liver, we will find this particular layer that is a peritoneum, the outermost covering. Now, the liver has four lobes, I already told you the large right lobe and smaller left lobe. So, see in the diagram this is a large, large right lobe and smaller left lobe, this one is smaller and the other two is the quadrate and quadrate lobes. 
are the areas on the posterior surface. So, see in the diagram the posterior in the back side there is a quadrate lobe and quadrate process of quadrate uh, section quadrate uh, lobe. Now, we will see the blood supply. So, hepatic artery and portal vein take blood to the liver whereas, venous retain is by variable number of hepatic veins. So, we will see the diagram we will get to know about uh, these portal vein yes there is a portal vein is here hepatic vein is there yes. So, this is how the blood supply is in this region. Now, see this structure of the uh, liver yes I will talk about on the cellular level. So, how the cells are there. So, the lobes of the liver are made up of tiny functional units yes and these units called as lobules known as hepatocytes yes. So, the basic structural unit of the liver is known as hepatocytes. Now, they are arranged in pair of columns yes and these cells are arranged in columns and they are forming a central vein through which all of the secretions will come yes. Now, between two pairs of columns of cells are the sinusoids. So, these are the spaces yes and in these spaces are the hepatic macrophages. So, there are some cells called as a cuffer cells yes this is important, important term cuffer cells are there which is known as a macrophages they are providing the defense mechanism yes. So, these macrophages or cuffer cells are present in those of the spaces the sinusoids whose function is to ingest or to destroy or worn out blood cells and any type of foreign particles which is present in the blood yes which is coming in that particular area. So, they will be killed off through those cuffer cells the macrophages. Now, see the diagram here uh, we can see this is the liver. Now, in liver uh, this is uh, this liver is formed from liver lobules yes and these liver lobules are we are saying the basic uh, cells are hepatocytes. Now, we have taken from all of these uh, liver uh, lobules we have taken one lobule one section we have taken. Now, in the lobule it will see the one lobule. So, here you can see in this lobule there are hepatocyte cells these all are hepatocyte cells see these all are these all cells basic cells are hepatocytes. Now, you will see these hepatocyte cells are arranged in a column yes they are arranged in a column and in between of these column we can see there is a, a one area which is forming the central vein this is here we are saying the central vein yes this whole of the area. Now, uh, this central area is feeding feeds into the hepatic vein yes it is attached with this hepatic vein. Now, if you will see this section there is a space this area there is a space yes and this space is called as a sinusoid yes. In these spaces there are some cells present there are some cells present and what are these cells see those cells are known as cuffer cells yes they are the macrophages. So, the blood which is coming through this route yes if any microorganism is present or any foreign thing is present they will be uh, taken back through the cuffer cells they will be destroyed through the cuffer cells. Now, composition of the bile. So, see uh, why we are uh, uh, seeing the composition of bile here because the bile is produced from the liver yes. So, nearly 500 to 1000 ml of bile is produced by the liver daily which is consisting of water 
mineral salts, mucus and it is consisting the bile pigments which is mainly uh, contain bilirubin. There are bile salts are present in, uh, in the bile which is emulsifying the fats and how the bile salts are formed? So, they, they are formed from the primary bile acids cholic acid and keno deoxycholic acid. These are the some uh, uh, you can say the precursors which will form the bile salt yes and there is a cholesterol. So, these all of the things are present in the bile and it will stored in the gallbladder. Now, what are the functions of the liver? So, a liver will help in the carbohydrate metabolism. Yes, uh, the excess of the glucose will convert it into glycogen that is stored in the uh, uh, liver. Yes, so that uh, carbohydrate metabolism is occurring and then fat and protein metabolism is occurring in the liver. Then there is a demination uh, of amino acid. So, uh, there is a one reaction through which the amino acid uh, 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 it is eliminated from the amino acid. So, that it is forming the urea which is the base product and coming out in the urine. So, this is also one process of eliminating the wastages through the liver. Then there is a transamination reaction means the transfer of amino group through some of the enzymes which is present in the liver and they are essential for forming uh, new amino acids or new proteins. Yes. So, this uh, one uh, function is also uh, in the liver. Then other functions like synthesis of plasma proteins, there is the blood, uh, blood clotting factors are formed here. Then breakdown of erythrocytes, yes RBCs are breakdown here uh, in the uh, liver, defense against the microbes are provided here. Then detoxification of the drugs, as we know that the liver is the organ which is eliminating or which is metabolizing the uh, most of the products. Yes, here uh, we are using the term first pass metabolism. So, most of the drugs are metabolized in the liver, most of the enzymes are metabolizing enzymes are present in the liver. So, they are detoxifying the drugs, they are detoxifying the toxic substances, not only the drugs and toxic substances, they are also uh, activating or inactivating the hormones. Yes, so these are some of the functions of the liver. It is forming the uh, this production of the heat. Yes, uh, because it, there is a metabolism occurring in the liver. Then it is uh, the most important. I told you is the secretion of the bile, which is stored in the gallbladder. So these all are the function of the liver. That's why the liver is a very important organ. Apart from it, there are some stored substances as well. So in the liver, uh, there is a glycogen fat soluble vitamins, iron, copper and some water soluble vitamins are also stored in, in the liver. So, these all uh, about the liver, um, how the liver uh, is, what are the functions of uh, the liver and uh, what are the function of all of the accessory organs we have covered in this lecture. I hope this is clear to all of you, we will meet in the next session of the digestive system we will cover.